And let's get rid of these crooked politicians. With all their corrupt minds. Make them clean up these filthy little corner markets. Get rid of the rotten meats they always want to sell us. Let's open up our eyes. Open up our minds. Martin Luther King once said he have a dream. Well, say do we have a dream. We want to see the mountaintop. We want to see all the good glory. Give us some decent schools. We want all the good jobs. Let's let them know that we can wear suits and ties and we don't have to tell lies. Let's get ourselves together. Let's unite. Let's be constructive towards one another. We got a long ways to go, young people. And you're the ones that can take care of it. If the ones that are over you can't handle it, then you've got to clear the way. Clear the way and make things easy for the ones behind you. Blanche? Blanche! Come over quickly. The new neighbors are here. Who did you say they were? All the real estate agent said was that he was a very successful doctor with a beautiful family. Good for you, Mabel. After all you went through with that broken down, supposed to be a writer and all his wild parties. Tell you what, let's invite them over for coffee and get acquainted, shall we? Sure, why not? Oh, yes, and we should introduce them to our country club. Look at that car. That alone must have cost a fortune. They must be the chauffeur and maid. They don't look like servants to me, Mabel. You don't think the agent sold to niggers, do you? I think they must be our new neighbors. She's the maid and that's the chauffeur. Come on. Hello. My, the Kincaids are very fortunate to have such a charming maid and, and butler. When will the Kincaids be arriving? We're planning a welcome luncheon for them. I didn't get the name. I'm sorry. I'm Mrs. Odell, and this is Mrs. Jacobson. Ladies, I am Mrs. Kincaid, and this is my daughter, Debbie. My husband, Dr. Kincaid. No, you're, you're the maid, and he's the chauffeur. And this is my son, Tommy. Mabel, get a hold of yourself. I won't let them. I won't let them move into our neighborhood. Your kids will never go to our schools. You'll never join our clubs or be accepted in any of our homes. Why bother to unpack? Just go back where you belong. You'll never live in that house in peace. I'll burn it down myself before I let you live in this community. Get your black hands off of me! Wow. 
Title drive down property value. All right, right, gentlemen, gentlemen, let's not panic. I never saw a man yet who wouldn't make a fast buck. This doctor will sell. I suggest you look before you leap. This Ken Cade has received a grant for his medical research from a prominent foundation. This foundation is supported by a federal agency. George? Well, we can use the homeowner's contingency fund, have the association buy them out. Then buy it back from them. It's that simple. Pay them twice what they paid for it, if you have to. But get them out. Agreed? George, I want you to get out there immediately and make an offer to this, uh, uh... Oh, you'll forgive the expression, Mr. Dudley. Jim Crow. Whatever his name is. Oh, and uh, Paul, be sure to remind this fellow of our strict building codes. The City Planning Commission will give you help if condemnation proceedings are in order. I heard they will steal anything that isn't nailed down. And they say if a white woman goes with a black man. You don't say. Really? Tell me more. Next thing you know, they'll be busing kids out here. Yeah, let's keep them in their own school. Damn you right. know? They're Chicanos. We fought the Indians with this land. They did. Damn right. Yeah. We interrupt this program for a news bulletin. A black family has moved into Meadow Park, and this has created a near riot. Many angry whites have gathered at the home. That's all the information we have at this time, so stay tuned for more information. Now back to our regular program. All right, Martha, let's go. I'm George Peabody, and this is Paul Hunt. We're from the mayor's office. I was sent here to see what we could do about solving this problem. Sorry, I took so long getting here. I see. Then you're not authorities of the law. No, doctor. And may I say that we from the mayor's office are not like those people out there. Never mind. I take it then you're here on business. Dr. Kincaid, the mayor's office is dedicated to one thing, solving the problems of all the citizens in the community. And you, doctor, are a citizen. And you are going to solve my problem. We are. Now, the Meadow Park Homeowners Association has gotten together and found an answer to this little problem. Now, you paid $200,000 for this house. What would you say if I told you we have a cash buyer right now today who is willing to pay $300,000 for this house. I would say, sir, you could take that money. Would you, would you gentlemen care for some coffee? No, thank you. Uh, $300,000 we're offering. Now, I'm willing to bet that no white person in Meadow Park would turn down an offer like this. I am not white, sir. Maybe that's the difference. You bet it is. Uh, now, look. Doctor, Mrs. Kincaid, have you considered Boyle Hills? It's a nice neighborhood, and I'm sure I can find you something. It's too far from my hospital. What the hell are you trying to do? Make a martyr of yourself? No. I've moved three times, and it is many months because of bigotry and prejudice. And I'm drawing the line here in Meadow Park. Dr. Kincaid, 
Would you take some time and think it over? Several days, perhaps. A few days, a few years, a few centuries, and my answer would still be no. Now, you go and tell your committee that, and that's my final answer. Good day, gentlemen. Doctor? Yes, there seems to be a prevailing ignorance. Uh, my wife and uh, two children. How do you do, John Ebar, Crusader? This is Marco. Thought maybe we can lend her assistance. How is it that you're here? Well, we heard it on the news. Ah, uh, yes. Well, your arrival is quite timely. Very impressive. Very impressive. You and your men take great risk. Are you armed? No, Doc. Our tactics are strictly defensive. I mean, we wouldn't foolishly invite the pigs to shoot us down. But the risk. Hey, man, our thing is to help the brothers and sisters in the ghetto. In case of emergencies, we have ways to protect ourselves. There's others. Preach on, Brother Abar. Well, you seem to be very well organized. Well, the idea is spreading. What is the name of your organization? How is it supported? From contributions. I mean, donations of every kind are needed to support the sisters and brothers down there in the ghetto. You seem to be doing a great service for our people and for us. What is the name of your organization? Black Front of Unity. Oh, yes, I've heard of the BFU. Well, we are most grateful and will give every assistance possible. Yeah, well, you can begin right now, Doc. And how's that? Yes, in what way? By well, thinking about moving back to the black community. Well, that's more of a personal request, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, you see, Doc, if uh, you weren't out here living up in, in this fancy crib, but living in a ghetto, we, we can lend a hand to our less fortunate sisters and brothers. Uh, my men wouldn't be subjected to such danger. Mr. Abar, we appreciate your concern and involvement, but my choice is to be here. I want to thank you for what you've done. But I have my reasons for not wanting you to be here. I'm asking you to respect them. Ken. Well, the awesome and imposing presence could kindle a riot, and that's the last thing I intend to happen. Well, what do you think that was out there, huh? A welcome wagon? Come on, man, let's split.
It's been four hours since the animal received serum. Respiration is returning to a more normal rate, but it's still one and a half times normal. Pulse rate is still the same, returning to normal. Also at approximately the same rate. No apparent side effects as yet. First human test subject have to be accelerated bodily function. Get hold of yourself. Go upstairs. How could they, Ken? How could they? It's only that we're trying to tear us down. Let them have it. Let them have this house. This poor sweet miser walks. Please, dear, take it to us, will you? Please. We'll, we'll talk about it in the morning. We're not dealing with sane people. What's the matter? Tommy, Debbie, will you please be quiet? Go on. I'll be right up. What's the meaning of this? Hey, you must know what the meaning of this is. Oh, I don't know what the hell he's talking about, do you? Huh? Always seem to be in the nick of time. Why did you return? Well, you know, like, Doc, uh, still believe in helping out the brothers in this kind of situation. Well, uh, afraid I need your help after all, Mr. Avon. Yeah, I hear you, Doc. Well, I'm afraid for my family right now. Uh, they must be protected until the people here become more accustomed to us. Now, if you would uh, provide that protection, uh, um, I'm sure we could reach an arrangement, say, in the form of a substantial donation to you or your organization. Well, why don't you let me think about it, huh? Come on, Chuck, speed up, man. Well, uh, I'd rest easier if you uh, could start tomorrow, but of course, if that's too short of a notice. No, 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 no. Why don't we uh, discuss this in my territory, huh? Well, the sooner the better. I mean, you'll find I'm a reasonable man, Doc, if you see things my way. Oh, all right, Abe Bond. Thank you. Yeah.
Miss Neighbor has quite an imagination of a classic collective garbage. <laughs> I'm uh, to go and discuss with him the possibility of, of protecting our home. Yes, I heard. Jim, you can't go on living like this, one filthy thing after another. First, give it more time. Time? That's what you said the other times we moved. And in the end, we had to leave anyway. I've expended a great deal of energy and time for the construction of my laboratory. By the time we find another home with sufficient lab space, <laughs> this thing will have settled down. And in the meanwhile? In the meanwhile, I'm trying to find an answer to a broken dream. A dream here? What good will your dreams be if we're all dead? Beth, my work can't wait any longer, neither can I. I'm through folding up my life, moving back into the shadows whenever we're threatened. Is it worth all the insults and threats those people throw at us? Seeing all the hate they feed on. Beth, I drew the line when we moved here, maybe even before, and I have got to back it up. And if the violence doesn't stop, will you give some serious thought about leaving this house? You don't want it if none of us will ever be happy here. Beth, you... I'm not inconsiderate. You know that. What I'm working on is of the utmost importance for these most grave and damnable times. Ken, what is it? If I could tell you, believe me, I would. The concept is of such tremendous magnitude that one day it will alter the destiny of the world. And I always want you to remember that. Always. And I do love you dearly. All I ask is that you have faith in me. I do have faith in you. And I love you. With all my heart, I love you. Believe me, if it weren't for the children. Yes, I know. Why can't we just leave us alone? Ah, oh, good morning, children. Daddy, what's wrong with Mother? Mother's a little upset over what happened last night and a few other things. I can't blame her. It's such a mean and cruel thing for anyone to do. I hate them. I hate them all. They killed our cat. Son, you must never say that. You remember when we had our dog, Toby? Yes, Daddy. And how he was suffering? Well, while you were holding him, he snapped at you. Did you hate Toby for that? No. Well, there are all types of people with broken minds and broken hearts that need mending. And they snap at each other because of their suffering. So when someone behaves badly towards you, just think about Toby, okay? But Daddy, why do we have to live in this neighborhood? Because they're like Toby and Daddy is a doctor and he is going to cure them. Dad, there's a park just a few blocks away. Can I go there and play? No, son, you better stay close to the house. Now you remember what Daddy said, or you'll be a little boy all your life. Oh, shut up, you Watusi Wobbler. Who cares? Lamont Chemical Company, uh, Dr. Kincaid. I'm inquiring about an order I made several days ago. Well, that's correct. No, I'll come in and pick it up. Fine, thank you. Bye. And as I've said over and over again, it's time for our so-called leaders and our black elected politicians to get off their rumps. Well, now, what an unexpected surprise to have the good Dr. Kincaid here in our midst. Tell us, good doctor, uh, how does it feel living at a palatial home bought by the poor black folks here? Now, this brother is just as guilty as the white man. As soon as he made his money from the poor blacks in the ghetto, he took it over to the white neighborhood to spend it. Not doing anything for the less fortunate brothers that he left here behind. That's exactly what I think he is. How you doing, brother? Could we go someplace and talk? Yeah, I know a great place. Where's your car? Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out, baby!
Mr. Avon. What is the purpose of your ghetto preaching? Purpose? Just look around you, man. There's your answer. Or are you one of the same as most bourgeois blacks? Just don't give a damn. Oh, come on, Mr. Avon. When you see one ghetto, you've seen them all. Exactly. But what's being done about it? Plenty. But more can be accomplished by the black voting bloc. Yeah, but that doesn't guarantee the right people getting into office. Already we have too many unconcerned politicians, black and white. City Hall doesn't hear the cries of the poor people in the ghetto asking for jobs and not welfare. So many of them are strangled by the ghetto through unfulfilled promises of unscrupulous politicians. Now, if these people had more influential blacks like you working for them, I'm sure we see some more changes. Well, unfortunately, there's some truth in what you're saying. But these things have a way of being solved. Yeah, sure, Doc. One day the ghetto will just vanish. So you see, Mr. Abel, I myself and my family are in a more dangerous situation than I have previously perceived. Well, so what you want me to do is be some kind of a bodyguard around the house and uh, around the family, huh? Uh, that's entirely correct. Why not just move back to the black ghetto? I don't have time to move back as yet. When my research is over with, I'll give moving back a strong consideration. And Mr. Abar, I'm presently involved in trying to find a prevention from heart disease. I also need someone of your physical stature to run some tests. Uh, sure, Doc. Then you'll come. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, fine, excellent. Uh, you'll get wages for this, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about these tests, uh, what is it that you're going to want me to do? Oh, nothing very complicated, though somewhat strenuous. I need to test the heart under different conditions and so forth. Uh, we'll have to undergo a thorough physical examination. Yeah, well, I am a very healthy man, Doc. Uh, so you appear to be, but uh, we can't leave anything to chance. Uh, that could be harmful repercussions. I'll report to the medical research lab at the university in a few days. Adam, Tommy. Everything all right? Okay, I guess. Sure, you've been taking care of the way then, isn't it? Yeah, the best I can. Where's your mother? In the house. Get out of my yard, you little Give me my fruit. Out. Get out, you little pickaninny. I want my friends. Don't you ever come in my white little black bastard. Get away from me. Get away. Swanson Metal Park. It's an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Swanson, uh, this is Dr. Kincaid. Uh, we're the patient of yours uh, who has just fainted, uh, Mabel O'Dell. Uh, what is her medical history? Oh, yes. Oxygen. Yes, of course. Uh, that's most unfortunate. All right, doctor. Thank you. Bye. She needs oxygen. It's in my car. Yeah, what she needs is a breath of fresh air.
What's going on? Wait a minute, big brother, Miss Brother. Hey, boy, it's all right. Oh, what's this guy? Some kind of iron rhino? Oh, I'm sorry, Ken. Bess, I told Jim not to play such horrible jokes as that. So whatever you got, you deserved it. It's all right now that we know. You could have been killed. Hi, right, kids. Hi, Uncle Jim and Aunt Susan. How are my sweethearts? Hey, baby. Look here, would you remind me never to be such a jackass again? Even if you have to hit me with something, it's better you than this cat. Hey, what is he? Some kind of watchdog or something? Hey, wait a minute, babe. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Sorry, Ken Key. Hey, it's me to sign. Hey. Uh, you children go on up there and watch TV. Yeah, I'll see your children in a few minutes. So you're the young man who's been storming the neighborhood with the back troops? Yeah, that's right. I need someone around, a special one on my way. Yeah, but with him around, you should have eternal peace. Uh, I'm curious to know why you came to your brother's house in that stupid masquerade you got on. <laughs> Jim has always been the trickster. Yeah, well, I fail to seem to humor. It's just that I've always left the serious side of life to Ken. Hey, there's a serious side that both of you gentlemen fail to realize. Yeah, well, what's that, my man? And that's the ghetto. I mean, it's lots more serious work to be done in the ghetto. Yes, well, I agree. It's still in a sorry state. Yeah, well, that's why we need men like you two to return. I mean, Jim, you are a little more fortunate. You live over in Rosedale where the whites are more civil. But the doc here, he's living on a great risk. Sometimes I wonder which is worse, living in among the thugs and the junkies of the ghetto or these ignorant whites. I don't know, man. I suppose I found the answer by living in Rosedale. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, well, if you excuse me, I'm going to watch a little TV. That's a rather abrupt and direct young man. Of course, a lot of what he says is true, though. Come on, Jim, let me get you a drink. Hey, I'll buy that. So it's been an ordeal living here, huh? Well, they didn't exactly welcome us into their lily white world with open arms. What about Bess? How's she taking it? Oh, pretty rough, I guess. And the kids? What about school? We're going to have to keep them out of school temporarily. Damn, Ken, you know, I can understand you're trying to move ahead, man, but when you put all of this first, ahead of your kids' education, then it's, you must really ask yourself, is it really worth it to me? Well, I would say, hell no. No, Susan, that's Ken's lab. Yeah, I know. Off limits. Say, what is he working on this time? I never know. He's so secretive. Sometimes I believe this house is all wrapped up in it. Really spooky. No, honey, just... I understand this house. I'm really not in the mood to discuss the matter. Oh, come off of it, Ken. What sort of a mood does it take to refuse $300,000? Is this why you're here? Is this the next wave hitting the shoreline of the Kim K's home? How much did they offer you, Jim? <laughs> Come on, baby. This is me, your brother. Do you think I would allow myself to be bribed against my own brother? Money has been known to weaken the spirit. All I want to know is, why do you have to live here? What are you working on that's so important that you're willing to live in jeopardy? What's going on in that lab of yours? You always were the silent type. Ken? The truth of the matter is, they didn't offer me any money, but they did threaten to withdraw my contracts from the city. Is living here so important? Say, baby, this house is out of sight. Oh, again, uh, fix me a drink. I mean it, Beth. This house is out of sight. Keep a happy home, keep a happy husband. That's right, baby. Anyway, I do hope things settle down so that you can enjoy this house. I don't think things will ever calm down. Hey, Robert, are there any black cowboys when you were a little boy? Not hardly, Tommy. Hey, and I'm not that old either, man. There were a few black cowboys. Uh, see, there was Deadwood Dick. He was black, mean as bad as tough as them all. Gee, Deadwood Dick. Better than the law. Ha! Ah, oh, Tommy. 
Say, sis, we've got a new split, baby. Don't leave yet. Well, Jim has got a few important calls to make, and since I don't get to go out too often with my husband, I better go see what he's up to. Say, there's nothing that you'd be ashamed of, baby. So she looks that good, does she? Well, if she did, you wouldn't be here. Oh, you finally admit it. Hey, sis, can you ever win? Come on. Well, I'll walk you to your car. I've got to go and replenish mankind. We'll pick up some furry rabbits. Yes, you must watch him. We can't have our good doctor spreading all of that goodwill around. Well, I'll leave that to the rabbit. You aren't thinking what I'm thinking, are you? Sure as hell am. Boss, it's this one up here. What are you talking about? It's 
Stand back, you yellow belly coward. No black belly slave got the nerve to shoot a white man. If I have to shoot, it's going to be right between the eyes. No slave is that good. I say we take him. You honkies want this land? I say that no ex-slave will ever own one grain of dirt in this state. All right, boys. In a few seconds, you better mount your horses and ride out of here. Otherwise, you better make a move. Stay where you are, man. The only way you honkies are going to get this land is to be buried on it. friend. I guess they'll take care of those scum. Yeah, well, for now. But there'll be others. So you're pretty good with those shooting lines. Where are you from? This place special. Guess I'll be moving on. Oh, sorry, I didn't get the name. My friends call me Deadwood Dig. But my enemies call me Smart Black. About supper time. Care to eat before you move on? Oh, thanks, ma'am. Good day. down with you people, man. Yeah, right on. Uh, I think it's been a middle park, man. Hey, like a cool breeze whispering in the middle park, man. What's happening? Yeah, you know. I heard you had to knock some white heads together up there last night. Yeah, just some third grade punks, man. Hey, what's been <laughs> happening here? Same old jive, my man. Complaints, complaints, and more yeah. complaints. Yeah, a woman called today and said the meat she bought this week was more rotten than the meat she bought last week. Did you want to go to another market? That's it, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Get this. A dude called in and said the contract that he has on his used car was so complicated that it would take 10 CPAs to figure it out. To bring it in? Yeah, he made an appointment, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Abar, how are you? Oh, Mr. Dudley, uh, what brings you to the hornet's nest? A stinging. Yeah, well, you let the bumblebee in my mouth pierce their ears. Like the torch they put under your ass to get you down here. <laughs> 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 Your impotence, Mr. Abar, may cause you a great deal of trouble. I'm used to trouble, Dan. There are those who feel that your mouthing will stir you up trouble in the ghetto and cause the blacks to write again. There is talk that government support for our programs may be withdrawn. Now, that worries you, doesn't it, Dudley? I mean, you know and I know that those programs didn't work with a damn. The man who that money was supposed to go to stands empty-handed. Abar. Hey, how ridiculous. Where do you think all the money went? I'll tell you where the money went. It was siphoned off the top by the top men up there. After that, there was nothing left. Nothing but some broken down pool tables, some chalk, and some jive coloring books. Yeah, in other words, to restrict black youths from burning down white institutions. That you succeeded in doing. And the black brothers, along with whitey, as ministries of those programs, didn't do too bad either. Are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating anything. You black politicians don't give a damn about what's happening to the black man's needs. Not the day, Mr. Abar. Yeah, I can see where your head, head is at. Computerized Uncle Tom. <laughs> Child! That was enough time. Uh, Mrs. Kincaid, I think it would be to your best interest if you could convince your husband to leave Meta Park. You mean to your best interest, don't you? It's inconceivable that a man could turn down the amount of monies offered him. You don't know my husband very well. 
There's also talk that they're going to cut out the monies that he uses for his private research. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Dudley. I trust I haven't kept you waiting too long. Not at all, Doctor. Your wife is a very interesting conversationalist, and we were just discussing a few poignant points. Yes, I heard about my grant. Oh, that's merely talk, Doctor. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Ken, they wouldn't. I feel that Mr. Dudley is worried about my dear, not about my grant, but about his political position. A bit presumptuous, aren't you, Doctor? Well, am I to presume that you did or did not make a call on a Mr. Abar about his preachings in the ghetto? Well, how did you know about that? I also know that people like you can afford to ride around in Mark Fours, the administrators of our poverty programs. I also know that such programs give our children inferior training in trumped-up trade schools, useless painting and molding classes, taught conga drums and contemporary dances, Shakespeare and many other useless things, while the top men send people like you around to threaten others. Threaten, Dr. Kincaid? Yes, threaten. You can tell those fatheads of yours that they can keep you on a leash. And out of pity, Mr. Dudley, I will come by every now and then and throw you a bone to remind you of the ass-kissing dog you really are. Now, good day, Mr. Dudley. Okay, Doctor. Darling, you're beginning to sound like Abar. Dad, I had a dream last night that some bad dudes were chasing you on a horse. And he said you're trying to protect the house. It was right after Lincoln freed the slaves. Oh? And we were surrounded by all these bad white dudes. Then the baddest black cowboy in the West, Deadwood Dick, comes and kills them all. <laughs> Daddy, what is it to be black? To be black is to be beautiful, but beautiful from the essence. We are the wise men who come bearing the gift of our indestructible humanity. The dream that one day little children will play and grow and live together like the princes of the earth.
Honey, what can I say? Believe me, if I had known, God knows if I had known anything like this would have happened. Ken, you knew this would happen sooner or later. You knew something tragic would happen. Please, Bess, try not to think about it. I've pleaded with you to take us away from this place, but no. You wanted to deal with races and bigots the way you deal with one of your patients. You asked for time to find the answers, answers that others before you couldn't find. Now look what happened. I've lost my child. Now, do you have the answers to bring him back? Bess, that was my son and I loved him too. But how was I to know that? What did you expect when they found out that we were black? Come in and throw the arms around us with love and kisses? How could I have stayed here? Now, Ken, who's next? You, me, Debbie, or are you still looking for answers? Bess, everything you say is true. Tommy's life was a great price Please, to pay. Please, Ken, don't start in about where does the black man draw the line. There is no line when your child has been murdered. A senseless murder just because his skin is black. Is Abe all right? Are we trying to lose our identity? Well, perhaps they have it on their conscience. Conscience? We are still talking about sick people. And after what has happened, do you expect us to continue to live here? Ken, when will you have had enough? What are you waiting for? To blow up this house or burn it down? Please, Bess, don't persecute me. What is it that you're so obsessed with that the slaying of your own child can't drive you out of this house? Ken, if you don't change your mind about leaving this house, I'm taking Debbie and I'm leaving you. But you can't leave now. of subject could go in several directions. Madness of a Hitler, unusual high qualities, that of a saint. I thought you said you were going to stay in bed and rest. No time for rest now, Mr. Abar. I called your wife before I left for the movies. Did you? She wasn't there, but I did talk to Debbie. Very considerate. And what did you think of the film of Dr. King and the March on Memphis? It was ugly. Gruesome is a more appropriate term for that event. So you say you admired Dr. King? Admired him, I loved him. Was it he who inspired you into the streets to, as they say, do your thing? Greatly inspired, Doc. Mr. Abar, come this way. I've been watching you and observing you to see whether you qualify as a candidate for my experiment. Candidate? You said I didn't have heart disease, Doc, that I was in perfect health. And indeed you are. I must apologize for deceiving you into believing that your physical examinations had to do with my examinations into heart disease. Say, man, what are you getting at? You claim to have so much concern for the black man's problems. If you could, how much would you be willing to sacrifice yourself? Hey, look, 
as I've said over and over again, as a black race, let's get ourselves together in every respect. For that, I'll sacrifice anything short of murder. Well, uh, suppose I could uh, make you indestructible. What would you say? I'd say you had your head in those test tubes too long and you should be on a funny farm. afraid to go along with my experiment. What if it fails? Well, then you would have died for a worthy cause, but I assure you, it won't. You know I don't believe this, Doc. Well, this is the serum that did it. Convinced? Maybe. But I'm not going to be a guinea pig, Doc. So you are afraid. Well, let's just say I believe in living for the causes and not dying for them. You know what you are. You're a fake. Oh, I know you're kind. Your image needs to feed off of causes for your already overblown up ego. Your kind is worse than the black bourgeois escapees. Scavengers living off the corruption of my kind. Oh, you scream, clean up the ghetto. And if they did, you'd be the first one to soil its fragrance to keep you up on that pedestal of, look at me, everybody. Man, you've got nerve. Yes, I have nerve. But you play it safe by living and rapping and acting out the conceit of a nothing crusader. And I don't have to take this. yourself down to the level of those scums. Nothing will ever hurt you. Supreme master of every situation, I stake my reputation upon it. The greatest human ever. I don't want to be great, man. Don't you understand that? I'm sick and tired of people being pushed around. I'm sick to death of Whitey, and I'm sick to death of you. I think I'm brave, don't you? Strong. But I got a weakness, Doc. Passion. Sometimes I want to kill. Kill! Kill! No use. They're probably gone by now. I better take this. you wanted me to do for the good of mankind. Stay away from me, man. No, 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 no. I was mistaken about you. You're not the right man for such a tremendous responsibility. Get out of my way.
you all right? Yes, I'm all right. It's Abar. Abar, somebody tried to kill him. Oh, Ken, please come with me. Debbie misses you, and so do I. But I'm afraid I've unleashed the most horrible of beings that could lead to the destruction of men and God knows what else. What are you talking about? Bess, listen. That greatly held secret of mine. The greatest scientific achievement ever known to mankind is about to become a frightening nightmare. Ken, what is it? I've created a superhuman. Superhuman? Is that where all the mystery and... Yes. The risk of someone finding out is too great to allow to get in the hands of the wrong person. What has this to do with Abar? Too late I discovered he had an emotional problem. It could lead to madness. I got three hours before the serum takes an effect. Oh my God, I didn't realize he was psychopathic. Are you going to kill him? Yes, before you become some kind of monster. Best, please go back to Jim's house. said that Ken was out looking for Ebar with a gun. She said he's going to kill him. What are you talking about? Why? I don't know. He must be crazy. I got to fight. Hey, wait! Hey, fellas. Doc's out looking for Ebar to kill him. Come on, let's ride. Joe, this guy doesn't even have a gun on him. That's all right. I can take care of that. 1,200. 383, roger. Frequency 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, one of these for you. Get after him! Thirteen A forty three. Request ambulance and assistance of forty seventh and Avalon, rear alley. 
Supervisor code two, please. Ten four. Go tell Abar's girl we found him. Check and make sure the doc isn't here. to waste you? Here you go, stupid pigs. Let's get them. Yeah, let's get them. Yeah, man, it's either them or us. You've got 30 seconds before we commence firing. Hey, Dad, look like Abar's on a trip. Commence firing. Wife. Make love, not war. Make what? Come back here! Ah, who the hell are you always giving orders to anyway? I said fire! Give me that gun. Shit. Yeah, I heard you tried to knock me out of my promotion, too. But that's right. I think you're a lousy cop, you and your mama, Uncle Tom. Oh. Oh.
biggest contracts last week. I don't believe it. Some kid outbidded me by $50. Fifty lousy dollars, man. Uh, dollars. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. Uh-uh, man. See, uh, I understand that the uh, county make it quite a number of the programs in the ghetto. I Look, uh, in your district. I'm not concerned about the blacks in the ghetto. Hey, man, we have it made here. The hell with the blacks in the ghetto. some kind of devil. Well, I'm afraid it's entirely out of my hands. Oh, I see, he told you. Oh, no, no, I don't think that would be wise. Well, that's too bad, but... That was perfect. must have been mad to have dreamt up that damnable formula. I'm curious to know why... Uh... Why I didn't take the potion? Yes. Well, my heart wouldn't have withstood its tremendous shock. I see. Now you have regrets. Well, I don't know. I must admit, however, that your performance at the Towers was quite remarkable. Yes, I was aware of you and your brother being there. I wanted to... Yes, I know that. Let me straighten your mind, put it at ease about that man in the alley. It was the police that killed him. You can take my word for it. Doctor, you foolishly assumed it was me. How do you know? By psychic powers. You see, the potion released from my soul of ancient wisdom, which is presently to be used. What do you intend to do with your power? My powers are of a divine origin. Are you of a divine nature? I can assure you I am. And that leads talking about committing suicide, and you're responsible. It isn't I. It's the man himself. He's self-facing self. Well, how does the power of yours apply? I'm only a tool, Doctor. A mirror reflecting man onto himself. By control of the mind, I can hasten the retributive forces lodged in his unconscious mind. Oh. I had suspicions it would work that way. I take it you can also control the element in man's environment. Yes. In that way, I can accelerate the process of man facing his own evil and good as well. Well, uh, I'm beginning to see what you mean. 
Well, uh, now we must try S something wrong. No, no. To further relieve you, doctor, if I misuse these powers, they can turn against me. Misuse? Well, how? Selfish gains. Personal power. Well, well, how would that affect you? A temporary loss of power and its devastating reactions. You send the nature. Anyway, I must leave. Oh, no, there's much to... I'll be back. Your house is about to be blown to smithereens.
executed when I tried to open this car door. Okay, okay. My car apologize for the way I behaved when you moved into Meadow Park. The reason I didn't want you to live next door to me is because I'm black and I've been passing as white all these years. And yes, I know. The doctor told me you were suffering from sickle cell anemia. Can you ever forgive me? where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. And so let freedom reign from the biggest hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom reign. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling cords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank 